now the Havilene is honoring some of their student trainers who've been uh, helping out with the men's squad. Coach Pete being out there, handing off the plaques to them. Uh, of course, without, you know, trainers, it's uh, tough to get a lot of things going for a basketball team. Yeah. So hopefully with all this uh, little last momentum, like we said, the seniors for the Havilene is Reed Wallace and Marshall Bonds the third. Let's see what the Hoblins can do here. As we just get for the lineups here. Hoblins getting ready to step for the lineups here. As we that, we'll start with the starting lineups for the Angelo State Rams. We'll start with the national anthem first. start with the starting lineups here for the Angelo State Rams. Yeah, both going to be named shortly here by the announcer uh, in the gym. We'll go ahead and repeat them for you once they do get named. Uh, we did not get word of the starting lineups for this game, so we're just going to hold off until uh, they get announced. Ryan Hammond. Number 12, Jovan Austin. Number 12, Jovan Austin from Grand Prairie, Texas. Dakota Ross. Regis Sutton from San Angelo, Texas. Number 44, Zach Jones, your starting lineup for the visiting Angelo State Rams here. And soon you have your starting lineup for the Javelinas here. Donna's Daly in the side lineup for the Hoblinas for tonight's game. And also the starting to join lineup will be Dwight Trailer. Guard from Lee College in Arlington, Texas. The start, the start Bassey also finds himself in the starting lineup. Guard from Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, 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 
Marshall Bonds, as him being a senior, will get the start tonight. Marshall Bonds from Little Rock, Arkansas. And, and the final person to sign line for the Hoblanders is number 45, Reed Wallace, for the Hoblanders. So a pretty tall lineup here to start the game for the Hoblanders here. So the team, starting with, like you said, Marshall Bonds, uh, usually comes off the bench, but uh, it is senior night here. Bonds has gotten a few starting jobs before, though, uh, in this team. Uh, coach Pete also does, uh, got to give him credit, he loves to change his lineup a lot. Uh, if there's any coach that you can say really plays chess when he's playing basketball, it's uh, Coach Pete Peterson. Yeah, Coach Peterson really has a good knowledge for the game and what players need to go in at certain times here. One, probably one of the longest tenure coaches in the LSC for other teams. Yeah, picked up 100 LSC wins with Kingsville just recently here this season as Bonds wins the tip for the Havelina. So uh, the Havelina is going to start with the ball. Bassey comes off a screen from Wallace. Havelina is looking to start off early, get some points on the board. Bonds drives in. That hook shot won't go. Bassey with the offensive board, though. And the Havelinas have found the second chance to score. Yeah, Dwight Taylor trying to find someone open here as he passes back out to Rashad Basie. Bassey, sorry. So Taylor has it now going off Marshall Bonds' screen. He is met by a double team. Bassey going to take the three-pointer. That shot doesn't go. Rebound there by number three for uh, the Rams, uh, Brian Hammond. It's the ball now on the other end of the court. Jovan Austin has it. Going to look for an option. So the ball just swinging around. Bailey takes the gamble for the steal. Doesn't work out, but the Havelinas still have their defense intact. Austin, Jovan Austin found the open Regis uh, Sutton there. Couldn't score, but the uh, Rams pick up the offensive board early. So both teams with one offensive board to start. Yeah, Hoblin is unable to box out on that one to get the rebound, and they pay for it as the Rams start off with a three. Yeah, Brian Hammond hit the open three. Puts his team up. Three to zero right now is the score. We'll see how the Havelinas can respond. They give it off to Reed Wallace, who's open from behind the arc. Shot runs in, in and out for him. Great hustle by Bonds. And the ball is back with the Havelinas. They're going to get another second chance opportunity here. We'll see if they can make this one work for them. Yeah, good, uh, good job there by Bonds with his long arms. Able to save the ball there. Yeah, Bassey comes off the screen, knocks down the jump shot. Puts the score at 3-2. to two. Like we said before the game, Angelo State rams out of the playoff contention for a postseason play, but the Hovlinas right now in the eighth spot do have their spot sealed, just trying to move up a little in the rankings here with this game. A good move by Jovan Austin, able to shake off the defenders, get to the basket and put it in off the glass. Gives the Rams the th a three-point lead yet again here. So Bassey with the ball now on the other side of the court. And they find Adonis Bailey, who almost dropped, dropped down the alley-oop but couldn't finish. Bonds was there to clean up the basket, though. So good job by Bonds not giving up on the play. Yeah, it looked at like that basket was a little bit too high for Bailey there on that one. But good job, awareness there by Bonds to put it in for the putback. Yeah, Bailey, one of the more athletic people for the Havelinas. Coming in uh, just uh, this semester, actually. And Brian Hammond now going to be called for the travel. So the Rams turn the ball over for their first time today. I always have a chance to take their first lead of the game here on this possession as they throw four to five. And now Bassey hands it off to Donis Bailey. And Bailey gives, looking for the option. Dwight Taylor almost had it. Look, he's going to take a three there, but decided not to. And Bailey throws the ball away, gives the Havelinas their first turnover. Drove on Austin, takes it to the other end. Adonis Bailey with the monster block, though. Rams keep the ball, and Hammond's going to try to respond with a three-pointer. Can't work for him, and the Rams couldn't secure the offensive board again, so Havelinas going to take it. Good pursuit uh, by Adonis Bailey there to get that monster block there. 
as Ferris, you would say, is... Uh, is he inspected it and rejected it right there. Adonis Bailey picks up his first block of the game. Great play by him. We'll see if the Javelinas can reward his effort with some points on the offensive end as they're going to call a touch foul there on Jovan Austin. Looked like uh, maybe just getting a little too handsy, uh, even though, you know, it wasn't that aggressive a foul. Uh, you know, uh, still contact on the play. Yeah, we see in this game, unlike the women's game, we didn't see our first foul until about halfway through the first half here, but how many is, are the Rams we have their first foul here early in the second first half. So Bassett gives the ball back out to Bailey. Ball, facilit ball gets facilitated between these two players a lot. Reed Wallace open from behind the arc. Knocks down that one. He's now one of two from behind the line with that three-pointer. And he gives the Javelinas their first lead of the game, 7-5. of five. And Bailey picks off that pass. And Javelina's got a fast break on the other end. Bailey's going to try to put it in. Can't get it to go. Tries to wrap around uh, Dakota Rawls there. Going to get called for the foul. It's going to take us to a timeout. So 15.48 left in the game. Javelina's leading just by two. We'll be right back. Full life, measured in seats, starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back to the Kingsville Hampton and Court. I'm Ferris Bowery, joined alongside with Colton Williams. Score is 7 of 5 here with 15.47 left in the first half. Havelina's with a slim two-point lead. Points coming. Uh, right now from Reed Wallace, Marshall Bonds, and Rashad Bassey. Yeah, Havelin's uh, fell behind. Had a little defensive lapse to start the game. Gave an easy three-pointer start off the game, but ever since, ever since that, they have had tighter defense. So now Jovan Austin with the ball at the top. Gives it off to Hammond. Hammond gives it back to Austin. Find Rawls there. And that shot won't go. See a good defensive pressure there put on by the Javelinas here. Yeah, Sutton couldn't make that shot. Javelinas get the rebound and have a chance to extend their two point lead here. Bassey holds the ball, comes off Marshall Bonds' screen. Looked like the Rams bench wanted a double dribble, but the refs didn't agree. So the Javelinas still have the ball here. Bailey with the ball. Just 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Bailey comes off uh, Bonds' screen. Can't get that pull of Jay to go for him, though. So uh, Bailey's struggling uh, to start this game 0 for 2. Yeah, they're complaining, like we said, getting, getting some easy looks, just unable to capitalize on him as Marshall Bonds commits the foul. Yeah, Jovan Austin drove right into him. Uh, looked like he was going to draw the call. Uh, and does so successfully. So, so the Hogs are getting ready to have two subs here. As Adam McMahon, Jamal Brown being set to check in for the Javelinas. We were just talking about uh, Jamal Brown actually being one of the key players for the Javelinas as of late. Yeah, really and, uh, making himself known on this team. Even with his productive play, as Austin knocks down the first free throw, uh, even with his productive play, uh, looks like he's staying on the bench to try to, you know, maybe be the sixth man to come in and, uh, you know, really uh, light a spark for the Javelinas. Yeah, you always want to have that good sixth man coming off the bench here. Austin knocks down the second one, knots up the game at seven points apiece here for each team. So Bass is going to try to give the lead back to the Javelinas here. Ball with Taylor now. Taylor finds Reed Wallace. Wallace thought about the three. Wallace takes it that time, puts it in. Reed Wallace going two of three from behind the arc. He's got six points leading all the Javelinas right now. 
and puts his team up by three. Yeah, he's looking to have a big night on his senior night here. Having his parents in attendance here and his brother. So maybe the family thing might help. It's all with the Rams now. As Brian Hammond has it, drives in, finds Sutton, Sutton. Gets to the rim, puts it in. Good move by Regis Sutton there. Yeah, good baseline move there to get just past Adam McMaw and put it in for the easy layup there. Puts the score at 10 to 9. Havelinas with a one point lead. Brown finds Adam McMaw in the post. McMaw draws the foul, still puts the basket down, so he's got an and one opportunity for himself. So he starts off. Uh, just one of one from the field with those two points. We'll see if he picks up the third one here. Adam Mugmar going to the first for the free throw line. First time tonight as he just came off the bench. Mugmar can't sink that free throw, but it looks like they're going to call a foul on the Rams. He called a lane violation there. So the foul is going to go on Dakota Rawls. And uh, McMahon had missed the free throw, but the foul is going to give the Havelinas the ball again. So they got another chance to increase this lead uh, as they lead by four right now. Bassey finds Brown at the side. Brown finds McMah, and McMah can't make the best of that one, but picks up the offensive board. And the ball in Rashad Bassey's hands to start over the possession for the Havelinas. They're going to try to get a second look at it. Bassey drives in. They're going to call a foul on McMah. Looks like he might have uh, reached yeah. over the back. You got to admit, though, for the Havelinas, we've seen so far this season, this is probably, is their, probably their best lineup they have always have on the floor here. And you have, your, you have your big man, Reed Wallace, and Adam McMaw down in the post there, and you have your outside shooters there. So probably one of the better lineups I've always had on the floor. So Austin has the ball now for the Rams. Gives it off to Rawls. Rams doing a good job of swinging the ball around the perimeter. And Rawls takes a shot, goes in and out, and the Havelinas come away with the rebound. Reed Wallace open. He's going to go ahead and lay it in, giving the easy points to the Havelinas. They take the 15-9 lead here, and Austin with a risky pass, but Brown couldn't get his hands on it, so the Rams still have the ball here. Yeah, so far good defense being put on here by the Havelinas. Good ball movement, but Chad Talkington for the Rams couldn't put in that three-pointer. So the Havelinas... Bringing the ball down the court now. Ball's in the hands of Rashad Bassey. Reed Wallace had the three-point, but passed it up. Gives it up to Bassey. Bassey drives in, gets tripped on the play. it will be the fourth foul on the Rams tonight. And an easy call there. So it looked like Talkington uh, just tripped up Bassey on the way. Bassey's not hurt, though. Got it up quickly uh, to his feet, so that's always a good sign. So now the Havelina is set to inbound from under the rim as Damon Warren checks in for the Havelinas as well as number four, Ryan Garcia. So Brown looking for an option here. Finds with Ma. Ma looking around. Give it to Taylor. Taylor looking back at Coach Pete to see which play they're going to want to run. Taylor comes off Warren's screen. Garcia gives the ball there to Brown. Brown comes off Warren's screen now. And Brown found McMah, but the pass was maybe just a little too fast, and uh, Havelinas weren't able to handle the ball. So 11.48 left in this first half. Havelinas with the 15-9 lead. We'll be right back. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. 
we can keep students in school. Visit BoostUp.org and take the first step. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. To the Kingsville Hampton in court. On Ferris Bowers on the wrong side with Colton Williams with the Havelina Broadcast Network. 11.48 left in the first half here. Havelina's with the 15-9 lead over the Angelo State Rams. You can thank Reed Wallace for the lead. Going three or four from the night and two or three from behind the arc. He's picked up eight points so far to start the game. And that's a great way to come out and play on senior night for the Havelinas. Yeah. And Marshall Bonds may not have, he's had scored a basket, but he actually has made his presence known on the defensive side of the ball. And the Rams throwing away the ball. So the Havelinas with good defense forcing the Rams to pass to a place where no player was at. So Warren going to inbound the ball here, gives it off to Garcia. And the Havelinas have a chance to increase their lead. As Taylor gives it off to Brown. Jamal Brown puts the moves on, but can't get the shot to fall. Rebound there by number four, uh, Antonio Dye. Talkington has it now. Good move by him. The ball just rims out of bounds. Can't get the bounce to go. Shot gets put back in, though, by Ryan Marsh. So the Rams within four. Scores at 15 to 11 here. Havelinas have the ball on their end of the court now. Passing it around the perimeter. Yeah, Havelinas see what he can do here down in the post. Yeah, Garcia finds Warren. So Warren's going to work on Talkington. Tough shot. Can't get it to go for him, but the Havelinas come up with the offensive board. Garcia's going to take the pull-up jumper. Goes in and out, but gets the lucky bounce. Gets put back in. So Garcia with his first basket of the game. Ryan Garcia, a uh, good player, but uh, hasn't found a lot of playing time uh, this season. Yeah, I mean, just like that, the Havelinas move their lead back up to six. Yeah, you got to wonder if Coach Pete is uh, trying to find uh, all the strengths of his players, especially going into Allen. He's going to need to know what his players have got. So foul is going to be called here on Adam McMaw. So that's going to send Thomas Diaz into the game. Jamal Brown going to take a breather. Both teams have four fouls apiece here in the first half, so far first half of the, of the game. Garcia has it, or excuse me, uh, Marsh has it now. Marsh puts the move on Damon Warren. He's go, now he's going to go to the free throw line for an N1 opportunity here. Yeah, so Marsh, very active player, good on his feet. He's going to try to put in the end one, put his team within three points if he can make it too. As uh, McMaw takes a seat. A couple subs being made here as uh, Justin Walling comes on for the Rams. Rashad Bassey comes back in for the Javelinas as well as Thomas Diaz checking in for the hog. It's the first time tonight. So Marsh can't sink the free throw. Damon Warren with the active hands, make sure he gets his uh, hands on the ball to get the rebound. Garcia has it now, gives it off to Warren. See what that can do here. Still have a four point lead in the game. Bassey almost lost it, but Diaz picks it up, gives it right back to Bassey. That's when they watch it from the hot is any one of their players can shoot a three-pointer pretty much. Diaz passed up the three to go in with the reverse layup, can't get it, but Damon Warren active on the boards, picks up the offensive rebound. Garcia can't put that shot in. And the Rams have the ball and have numbers. Chad Talkington gonna go from the three-point line and Bassey gonna be called on that foul. Yeah, you never want to shoot a jump shooter from behind the three-point line, but... So Chad Talkington going to get three opportunities at the charity stripe to put his team within one. And 
he makes the first run here to bring the score 17 to 14. Hovland is still up by three here, but Talkington still has two more free throws. He goes for a second one and that also bounces in. So let's see what he can do here on his final free throw attempt. Yeah, if he goes three from three here, it'll put his team within one point. So Garcia brings the ball down for the Javelinas and scores now 17 to 16. Javelinas with a slim one point lead. With Donis Bailey back on the court for the Hogs. And Damon Warren trying to use his post presence. Gets the bounce to go for him. Damon Warren, uh, definitely a big guy, Colton. Yeah, he's got a lot of size on him. 6'8. One of the bigger post players uh, in the LSC. Yeah. Definitely uses that to his advantage in most games. Hammond finds Talkington in the corner. Talkington going to try to run it in. Can't get the call there. So Havelin is bringing it back on the other end. Bassey puts it in off the layup. Havelin has had numbers on that one and took it to their advantage. Pushed so their lead back up to five. Havelin is putting in two quick baskets uh, after the Rams had put it, uh, had cut the deficit to one. Hammond has the ball now for the Rams. Finds Die. Die finds Marsh. Marsh fakes the shot. And passes it right to Adonis Bailey. Not what he intended. But you know, fair. some of these players do have the same color jersey, so he might have got a little confused on that one. Yeah, they do have the inverse jerseys. Uh, and with that, uh, with that basket by Damon Warren, sends us to a timeout here by Coach Pizzo. 8.15 left in the game. Havelin is leading by seven. And uh, it looked like the Rams had, had gotten it close by cutting in, uh, you know, to the Havelin's lead, getting within a point. And then the Javelinas respond with three quick baskets, so they go on a 6-0 run, put themselves back up. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of amazing what you can do with your, to recapture your lead, just by making easy shots, getting the rebound, and getting some key turnovers there that we saw Adonis Bailey get on that last one. Yeah, the Javelinas uh, had actually stolen the ball twice in those last three possessions uh, in, during that 6-0 run. And uh, Javelinas being able to force the Rams to turn the ball over, but not only that, able to convert on the opportunities that uh, they've been getting. And a good thing the Havelinas can do or say, or say about their play right now is that they're having Angelo State play their tempo of ball right now. And as long as you do that, you make the other team play your tempo of ball, you're always going to have be the be better off. <laughs> and now Brian Hammond bringing the ball down for the Rams. His play resumes here. 8.05 left in the game. Havelinas with the 23-16 lead. Hammond being guarded by Rashad Bassey. Finds Die. Die tries to drive in with the floater. That shot won't go for him. Wallace on the board finds Ryan Garcia. Garcia looks like he might want to slow the ball down there. Let the rest of the Havelinas come to the rim. I'm sure Bassey got the ball and see what he can do at the top of the key. Gives it off to Damon Warren. A good move. And great play and communication there between Rashad Bassey and Damon Warren. It looks like uh, they're working well off the screen, Colton. Yeah, Havelinas pick up their largest lead of the game, nine points now. Good pick and roll game from the Havelinas so far. Team up by nine, largest lead of the game for the Hogs. So Marsh on the turnaround, can't get it to go, falls off the front of the rim. Bassey has it now. Going to slow it down as the numbers were not in his favor. There is. He's going to reset here and see Coach Beat draws up a play for ba Bassey. Yeah, and Coach Fred Reich for the Rams. Looks like he has four players set to check in. He might not be happy with uh, his squad's performance right now that's on the court. Yeah, he's going to bring back in Marshall Bonds. It looks like Marshall Bonds is at the sub table. Ryan Garcia takes the three-pointer. That shot doesn't go. Warren can't get the offensive board, so Dai is going to come away with it. Going to give it off there to Justin Walling, who takes the three. That shot won't go. Stan Marsh cleans up the board with the put back there. Makes the score 25 to 18 now, so the Havelinas with a seven point lead. Just about 6 23 left in this game. Bailey being crowded. The ball gets to Ryan Garcia now. Garcia gives it off to Wallace. Wallace to. Wallace going to be called. On that charge, the crowd definitely wasn't happy with that play. It may have looked like Marsha, I got to say, it looked yeah. like he kind of flopped. Yeah, you got it. 
And uh, so 6-10 after that timeout gets called. Havelin is with a 25-18 lead. Uh, we'll be right back. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to the Hampton Inn Court. I'm Fess Bar with Colton Williams here. Havelin is leading 25 to 8. We're going 6 of... Uh, excuse me, uh... Anyways, Havelina's with a seven-point lead, 25 to 18. Yeah, you see uh, how Coach Keat bought in three players, Adam Mugma, Marshall Bond, and Dwight Taylor came back in for the Havelina because Coach Pete did not like the play of his bench players that were on the floor. So let's see what this new lineup can do here for Coach Pete. Damon Warren is three or four from the field right now. He's got... Uh, Excuse me, he's got six points for the Havelinas as the Hawks steal the ball away again. Forcing the, another turnover here on the Rams. Bassey with a good hesitation move, gets the basket to go and draws the blocking foul there. They get the ref didn't know what to call there. It's like he was gonna call the charge, but last second changed it to a blocking call on the Rams. Yeah, it looked like Rawls might have been just in the restricted area. It looks like the refs are talking it over, but they're gonna go ahead and give the basket. Oh, they're gonna oh, call it a charge. Changes his mind. To the charge, and uh, Hampton in court not very happy with that call. So that takes away the basket made by Bassey. So it puts the score back to 25 to 18. Dytrell Bracey checks on the court for the first time. Dytrell Bracey, uh, you know, usually Coach Pete turns to him earlier in the game, but... Uh, just 5.42 left in the first half. Uh, still a lot of time for Bracey to do his work. Yeah, it's like Coach Pete is still arguing with the ref on that call there, saying he looked like he was just, it should have been a charge instead. But nonetheless, the Rams will get the ball back. The shot will go off the board for the Havlinas. The Havlinas still hold on to a seven-point lead, 25-18, with about 5.42 here left in the first half. Austin has the ball here for the, for the Rams. He gives it off to Sutton. Just 5.30 left in this game. Havelina still with a seven point lead. Uh, it has been cut down just a bit by the Rams. Austin holds the ball now, looking for an option. Finds Hammond. And Bailey picks the ball away, but can't come off with the steal. Austin uh, gets the ball back. They're gonna call a moving screen there. Good defense there by the Havelinas there. Catch the break there on that moving screen call. Yeah, Zach Jones is gonna be called for it. Call goes against him. Havelina's in the bonus now. As, uh, or excuse me, the Havelinas have put the Rams in the bonus. Uh, they have 18 fouls. Rams with five team fouls so far. So a double screen here set by Bailey and Mugma. And a blocking foul going to be called that time. Mugma puts it in. No question about that call on that one. Yeah, Jones. Jones tried to draw the charge, it looked like, but uh, looked like the refs were watching pretty closely there, not wanting to let another call get away from them, especially uh, one that was closely disputed. Yeah, they, and they didn't give him the continuation on that one, so the basket he made will not count. So Malad's going to head to the line for two. Can't put the first one in. Leaves the score at 25 to 18. So Malaw going to try to put in this second free throw. 
can't do it. So the Javelinas haven't been able to score in just a few minutes here. Score still 25 to 18. See what Javon Austin can do here with the ball. Just under five minutes here, still finds his team down by seven. Finds an open Marsh. Marsh puts that two-pointer in. Puts the team within five, so 25-20 here lead with the Javelinas. Yeah, the trail Bracey bringing it up on the court. Pass off to Marshall Bond. Bailey with the turnaround jump shot. That shot's going to go for him. He was struggling a little bit early on with uh, going 0 for 2, but uh, that first shot goes down for him, and uh, you could tell he's kind of relieved by it. Yeah, it only takes one shot to turn your night around or turn your shooting style around here, so hopefully that will continue to carry on for him. Sudden draws the foul, but Marshall Bonds made sure that the and one wasn't possible with the monster block there. Sudden's going to be sent to the line for two points as the Havelinas pick up their ninth team foul in this half. And the first one just rims out there. Yeah, Sutton couldn't put the first one in. It's Mike Evans here checking in for the Javelinas. Uh, so early on here with 4-12 left in the first half, Colton, every player on the Javelina team has seen the court. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the first time we've usually seen that from Coach Pete early in the first half. Usually he puts them in in the second half. So different approach here. I yeah. guess he wants everyone to play at least one couple times at home here. Yeah, trying to get a lot. Uh, just uh, maybe some of the some of his team to get a feel for it as uh, Coach Pete calls a timeout there. So 4.05 left in the game. Havelina's with a six-point lead, leading 27 to 21. And uh, like we said, Colton, uh, Coach Pete likes to uh, sub in players a lot, but uh, we usually haven't seen all the players on the squad get to the court. But uh, like I said, you know, the Havelina's uh, clinching their seed, heading to Allen. Uh, Coach P might be just trying to find uh, any talent from the Havelina squad that he might have uh, might have missed before. I mean, with Mike Evans, you haven't really seen too much, but he does have that height advantage over most players. So I mean, maybe Coach P's actually trying to see what he can do with him, just trying to work it because they know they have that seed already locked up or the spot in the playoffs. Maybe they're trying to see if he's just a little experimenting here with, with what players can do in different positions. Yeah, gonna try to find out which players work as the players take the court again. Wallace inbounds to Dytrell Bracey. So four minutes left in the game. Havelin is with a six-point lead. Bracey gives it off to Reed Wallace. Wallace going to go for the pull-up jumper. That shot's not going to go. Bailey with the hustle gets the offensive board for his team. So Bailey making sure nothing comes easy for the Rams. And that's, uh, that's one of those pure hustle rebounds. So Taylor going to go for a three-pointer. That shot doesn't go for him. Javon Austin with the rebound there, passes out to Sutton. And Reed Wallace with the block there. Mike Evans, though, had his foot just over the line, so the ball's going to stay with the Rams. 3.28 left in the game. Havelin is with the 27-21 lead. We'll be right back. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Welcome back to the Hampton in court. I'm Ferris Sabari with Colton Williams. Havelina's with a 27-21 lead now. Uh, Havelina's on defense right now. Big block came from Marshall Bonds. Uh, actually, big block, excuse me, came from Reed Wallace. Mike Evans got the ball, but stepped right out of bounds. So the Rams going to inbound again with 28 seconds left on their shot clock. 3.28 left in the game. 
Yeah, Hovland is trying to close out this first half. A little bit of a run here. Our see can do here with only a six point lead with about 3.30 left in the first half. Yeah, Havelina is having some trouble scoring uh, just in these past few minutes. Haven't been able to get their shots off very much. So Sutton has the ball now, gives it off to Marsh. Marsh gets that, uh, maybe like a 16 footer there. A 10 footer actually would probably be definitely way more accurate. Estimation. That Charles Bracey with the ball now for the Javelinas. Finds Mike Evans. Evans can't handle the pass and throws the ball away. So two turnovers there for Mike Evans in his short limited play time right now. Jovan Austin finds uh, Brian Hammond now for the Rams. Sutton has it at the top. Wallace gives him the space to take the shot. Sutton can't make the best of it. Brown comes away with the rebound and the Javelinas have the ball again. Brown drives in with the hop step, can't make it go for him. Sutton picks up the board, neither team really being able to score very much here as the score is still 27 to 23. Austin tried to drive in on the layup, couldn't get it to go. Mike Brown secures the rebound for the Javelinas and they get another chance at increasing the lead here. Bracey with the ball now looking for an option. The Javelinas haven't scored in a while here, looking to try to find anything, any basket to go here. Mike Evans going to drive in, try to make the opportunity for himself. Does so successfully. Mike Evans with the post play. Puts his team up by 6, 29-23 for the Javelinas here. So under two minutes left, Austin gets fouled from behind. Going to head to the line and shoot two. Foul's going to go on Dytrell Bracey. That's going to be his first. As it looks like Damon Warren... He's getting set back to check in as well as Dwight Taylor. So under two minutes left, we'll see how the Javelinas can close out the half. Austin gets the lucky roll on the first one, puts his team within five. Yeah, the Javelinas right now losing somewhat of their momentum they built early in the first half here. No. Austin puts in the second one, puts his team within four points. Uh, Probably the closest that the Rams have been here since early in the first half here. So Halvin is looking to build some kind of momentum here in the last minute and a half of the first half. Dwight Taylor gives the ball into Warren. Warren can't make that shot go for him. Havlin is trying to get their points from the paint. Warren couldn't put that shot in, but he's had a good night so far uh, going, at, I think, three of five now. Coach Pete, last yeah. miss. Yeah, Coach Pete not liking the play of his uh, his lineup right now. Seem yeah. a little frustrated there on the bench. And we'll see how they can respond from it. Good defense from Dwight Taylor. Just making it hard. And Dwight Taylor's efforts will be rewarded as he did force the turnover there on the Rams. So Bracey bringing the ball down. Just a minute left here. 29 to 25. Bracey has the ball now. Tough shot by him. It's not going to go. Warren's going to come away with the board. And Warren's going to drive in. And the layup's going to go for him. So he gets his eighth point of the night there. 31 to 25. Havelinas retake a six point lead. It's been around that that uh, lead for, for quite some time. Yeah, low score in half. Usually for Havelinas, Havelinas usually average about 40 points a half, it looks like. But. Jovana. Right now, hold on to a six-point lead. Hammond has it now, drives in. Can't get the shot to go. Marsh has it, gets it in off the glass, so puts his team back within four. 20 yeah. seconds left on the clock. Bracey's going to take his time going down the court. They're going to try to get the last shot of the half, and the Havlians are definitely going to hope it's a, it's a successful one. Yeah, the Havlians definitely trying to build, trying to get the last shot of the half, try to build some momentum going into the half. Wallace sets the screen. Bracey drives in, gives it off to Damon Warren. Warren with the turnaround layup there. And that'll send us to halftime with a 33-27 score. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you the halftime report right after the break. So just stick around and we'll see you soon. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. You're level 7 in your face, Pep Talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, 
You, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Go ahead. I'm assuming you're all brothers. Welcome back to the Hampton in court. So far, the Havilene is with a 33-27 lead. Uh, stats not coming in right now. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties, but I can tell you uh, so far, Colton, lots of production coming from Damon Warren in the post. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing a good job. Hopefully he's had a good job building up a biggest lead of six, but right now we've got to cut down to about a six, well, yeah, about a six-point lead with the Hobbies have had all game. But, you know, they lost some momentum going in there the latter part of the first half there. Hopefully Coach P can uh, talk to his players and try, try to recapture some of that momentum they had to start the game. So let's see what the Hobbies can do here coming out in the second half. Yeah, and... Uh, Looks like the Rams might be struggling just a little bit more on the other side of the court. Uh, not too much on their side. Seems like they're struggling. Turning the ball over quite a bit. Havelin is being able to uh, really, uh, you know, find the gaps and force the turnovers on the defensive end. That's what the Havelinas have been known for all season. And, uh, read, uh excuse me. Damon Warren, like I said, huge performance right now, going, uh, I believe, 5 of 8 from the field. He's got 10 points on the game so far. And now the stats have come in. So, excuse me now. Damon Warren went 5 of 7 from the field. He's got 10 points. They only have Alina in double figures. Uh, and they're really using his size and utilizing it in the post. On the other side, the Angela State Rams are really going through Ryan Marsh, their post player. He was going six of seven from the field. He's got 12 points on the night, leading uh, all players here. So, so far, so good for the Havelinas as they have the six point lead. Shooting at 46%. Angelo State not doing as fortunate, only going nine of 25 from the field. So Angelo State have a lot of, uh, have a lot of questions going into halftime, but they're gonna need to answer if they wanna win the game. Yeah. There's definitely uh, there's some small little things they need to work on. Offensive rebound, like the, the first they got, give a lot of second opportunities there. 11 second chance points there for the the Rams in the first half there, so that's something the Hoffman is going to cut down on. Yeah, Kingsville, though, leading the points in the paint 20 to 12 and having four points off turnovers while the Rams don't have any. Yeah, that's. Hoffman have a. So I mean, look for this, The way they started the first half is not the way they need to. Come outside the second half. So let's see what they can do here. We see what Coach Pete's telling them during halftime. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break as we head into. Uh, we'll be joined here in the second half again. But once again, halftime here. Kingsville leading the Angelo State Rams 33 to 27. You think you're just checking your messages or telling a friend you're on your way? They could be the last words you ever type. Make sure you get where you're going. I got no balls to lose him. Shocking throws it real all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to the Super Bowl Hanson Court. It looks like the players are warming up here for the second half. Ferris Bat with the Havelina Broadcast Network joined alongside with Colton Williams. 
So Halflings with a 33 to 27 lead. Colton, a uh, quick recap of the first half. What did you notice? Uh, you know, the the seniors came out big. You know, Mark Zabonzo on the defensive side of the ball. Reed Wallace right now, you know, leading the way for the Havelin as far as points. Oh, I'm sorry. Damon Warren's leading the way as far as points by the Havelin, but Reed Wallace came out pretty strong, making two uh, two three-pointers in a the, in the layup there. So, you know, the Havelin just need to cut back on their turnovers a little bit. Right. And uh, just rebound the ball a little bit better. I think it should be pretty good going to the second half. And uh, the players are on with here, yeah. Uh, as you said, uh, right now leading the way for the Javelinas, though, is Damon Warren going 5-7. Uh, most of his points coming from in the paint. A big post player for the Hogs. He's got 10 points. Uh, and then second, second leading scorer for the Javelinas is going to be Reed Wallace. Two of three from behind the line. And had an easy layup to go for him. Going three of five so far, and he's got eight points for the Javelinas. And uh, Javelinas, you know, uh, another interesting thing is uh, they've had three blocks on the night. The Rams haven't had any, and that kind of uh, shows, you know, the defense that the Javelinas uh, are known for. Yeah, you know, they've had, they did have pretty good defense of showing, holding the Rams to only 36% from the floor, 16% from the free throw line, I mean, from the beyond the arc. I only hold at 27 points, so right now the Hawkins defense defense probably the main story of the their lead right now. Yeah, and, as, uh, and uh, another interesting thing that, that we noted earlier was, uh, once again, Coach Pete uh, making sure every player on his roster found the playing time this game. Uh, as, uh, you know, once again, the Havelinas have clinched their seed in the playoffs. They're making it no matter what, and they're going to be heading to Allen for the LSC tournament. But what's the most important thing now, Colton, is making sure you get the best seating possible. Yeah, like we said earlier before the game, that they still have, you know, easy, they could easily go from eight to six. And uh, that's true in uh, the three-way tie right now, uh, four, six, seventh, and eighth place. And that three-way tie is uh, there. But anyways, 125 left till the second half starts, and we'll see you once the second half takes place. You must be. Your fairy godmother? It doesn't take a fairy godmother to tell you that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Always choose one that's the right fit for your child's age and size. Oh, that does make a difference. <laughs> Remember, their happily ever afters are in your hands. To find out more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. To the Hampton Court on third side, going alongside Colton Williams. Second half just about ready to be underway. Havelin is with a 33-27 lead. They've uh, held the lead for most of the game. And uh, we'll see if that can continue. Uh, but so far, a low scoring uh, game for, for both teams so far. The play resumes here for the Javelinas. Jovan Austin with the ball now, gives it off to Dakota Rawls. Rawls goes back to Austin. Bailey gambles on the steal, can't get it. But Dwight Taylor will take it instead and saves the ball from going out of bounds. And now, and almost an alley-oop, just too high of a pass. But the Havelines are trying to go for a, a crowd-roaring shot on that one, but unable to capitalize and say, ha, Taylor threw it out of bounds there on that one. Just a little too high for Bailey. Yeah, the ball just a bit too high, as you said. So the ball on the Rams' side of the court again. Rawls gives it off to Hammond. And... Austin gets stripped there. Havelinas have numbers. Bailey gonna make it go that time. Bailey with the alley-oop, and the crowd goes wild. Third time to charm first. It's 
strike as he has tried a few times before. That one finally does go for him. So 35-27, Havelina's with the eight-point lead here. Rams are going to try to respond on the other end as Brian Hammond drives in. And the Havelinas come away with another steal. And so now the Havelinas look like uh, they're playing a little confident here. And, uh, you know, that last alley definitely uh, giving them some more uh, confidence in their play. So Bassey holds the ball now. Comes off the bonds of screen. Goes for the layup Man, and gets the blocking foul that time. So great job by Rashad Bassey getting the and one play. Putting his team up by eight points, or excuse me, by ten points. First double digit lead of the game for the Javelinas. And uh, if this free throw goes in, the Javelinas will actually have an 11 point lead. So Javelinas starting out this second half pretty strong. Yeah, it's a good, uh, the alley oop hopefully can provide some momentum for the Javelinas, like you said, able to build up now to an 11 point lead. Hopefully they can carry that momentum through the rest of this half. So now the score 38 to 27 lead with the Javelinas. Ball with Rawls, bounces it to Hammond. Hammond tries to drive in, gives it off to Austin. Austin's open for the three. Ball goes flat off the iron, and the Javelinas finally secure the rebound after it looked like some uh, pandemonium for the ball there. It's like Bassey trying to shake Javon Austin off him, but Javon Austin all over him. Javon yeah. Austin just standing a little bit too close, though. Going to get called for the foul. Two quick fouls here to start the half for the Rams. They do have two team fouls so far in this half, like you said. So Donis Bailey going to uh, inbound the ball from the sideline here. Gives it off to Bassey, and the Havelina is going to start uh, start with a fresh shot clock. Ball being swung around the perimeter. Taylor finds Wallace. Bassey comes off the screen with a uh, with a jump shot from the free throw line. That shot won't go. Good rebound by Hammond. He's going to try to rush the ball down. Probably try to draw a call there, but did not get it. Yeah, and Dakota Rawls is going to make him uh, pay for it. Hits the open three pointer. 38 to 30 is the score now. So Bassey with the ball. Gives it off to Wallace. Bonds now has it in the post. Looks like he's going to try the turnaround jumper. Doesn't get the shot to go, but draws the foul on Zach Jones. It's going to be Zach, Zach Jones' uh, third foul uh, of the game. Bonds is going to go to the line for the first time tonight. Bonds can't sink the first one. Bounces off the front of the rim. Yeah, just a little short on that one. Holloway's 11-point lead just got cut down to eight. So, Marshall Bonds trying to increase the lead here by a couple points. Neither free throw goes. So they're call a foul on the Rams on that one. Lane violation. So Marshall Bonds will get another shot here at the second free throw. Yeah, we'll see if Bonds can sink it. Put his team back up by nine. If he does, the Rams will surely regret putting, uh, getting the lane violation. Bonds does sink it. So 39-30 is the score here with 17.06 left in the game. Javelinas have uh, led most of the way. And uh, if they have it their way, they, they definitely want to close it out that way as well. Ball right now with Jovan Austin. Yeah, last time the Rams had the lead was that three-pointer they made to start the game. And Rawls puts it in off the glass. So Bassey has the ball now for the Javelinas. Gives it off to Wallace. Wallace bounce pass into Bonds. Bonds going to try to work with it. Gets the shot to go for him. So three straight points here for Marshall Bonds. Push the lead back up to 11. Or nine, sorry. So Javon Austin has the ball with the Rams right now. Gives it off to uh, Regis Sutton. And a timeout is going to be called by co uh, head coach. Uh, excuse me here. Timeout being called by the Rams as, a trailing, as they trail by nine. 16-13 left in the game. 
Havelin has had a little bit of a sluggish first half on the offensive end, as we've noted, Colton. But so far, this half really coming out and uh, playing with some fire. Yeah, it all started with that. I want to say it started with that alley-oop there. Finally started to get it, and then the Havelin started to try to build momentum from that. So far, able to hold on to their lead here. It's going to be back, back and forth between 11 and the 9-point lead here. So as long as they can have this kind of momentum in gameplay, it's going to be a hard time for Angelo State to come back in this one. Yes, yeah, so, so far for the Havelinas. Still being led by Damon Warren, who's had 10 points. Donna's Bailey, 2 of 4 right now, uh, coming off that alley oop. Shot Bassey going 3 of 6 from the field. He's got 7 points. Reed Wallace with 8 for the Havelinas. Still plenty of time left in this game. Lead only at single digits with 9. But so far, the Rams have already uh, had three team fouls on them. The Havelinas haven't fouled yet. Uh, in the half. And so we'll see if they can keep the momentum on their side of things. Yeah, how about come out here on defense just after the timeout here? Try to keep the defense, try to keep the offense of the Rams in check here. Austin has the ball now, gives it off to Hammond. Hammond finds Rawls. Ball being swung around quite a bit by the Rams. Rams throwing it away again. That's going to be their 12th turnover uh, on the night. And just to uh, you know, show you the, the difference between the two teams, Havelinas only have six. So the Havelinas being able to force the turnovers so far and not committing too many on the other end. Damon Warren in the post now. He's been monstrous all game. Can't get that shot to go. Donis Bailey will clean up the board but can't put it in. Warren comes away with the rebound. Warren using his high to his advantage there on that one to get two rebounds there. They found an open Rashad Bassey at the top, which was good, so they can restart. Give themselves a fresh opportunity. So Bailey doing work. Goes for the pull of Jay. That shot goes for him. So Adonis Bailey so far with a quiet night going three of five. Has six points on the night. Rashad Bailey almost trying to go for, Adonis Bailey trying to go for the steal on that one, but Hammond passes up the three-pointer, takes the pull of two instead, but that shot doesn't go. Rams get the rebound. They're going to call a foul on Damon Warren for forcing Javon Austin out. I don't know if really so much as a, a blocking foul call. I think Austin just bounced off of there on that one because, you know, Warren's not a tiny guy there. So another timeout being called here. Uh, by the Havelinas this time. So 15.07 left in the game. Havelinas with the 11 point 43 32 lead. We'll be right back. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. <laughs> you should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Okay, fires. Welcome back to the Kingsville Hampton in court on Ferris Valley, joined with Colts and Williams. 15.07 left in the game. Havelinas with a 43-32 lead here. And that shot, three-pointer being taken by Justin Walling. Three-pointer doesn't go for him, though, so the Havelinas come away with the rebound. Bassey taking it now. Gets by two of the Rams. And Bassey lays the ball in. Puts his team up by 13. So now the Rams going to try to respond on the other end. Walling looked like he was going to take another three. Decided against it. Damon Warren comes up with a steal. You don't usually see a big player like Warren come up with steals for the team, but does so there. Dwight Taylor can't get that shot to go. Looked like he wanted to, though. So yeah. he's going to take two free throws here. 
Yeah, the Hot Wings doing a good job in stepping up their defense here as they get another steal, this time from Warren. Like you said, yeah, Warren usually not known for picking up steals, but they would pick up one on that possession. 14-24 left in the game, so Dwight Taylor's gonna have two chances at the charity stripe. Sinks the first one, puts his team up by 14, the largest lead of the game for the Javelinas. Dwight Taylor makes good on both opportunities. Puts the team up by 15. Uh, so 15 now is largest lead for the Hogs. Ball on the other side of the court. Brian Hammond has it. Ball being swung around. Bassey almost picked the ball out of Hammond's hands. Hammond can't make the shot go for him, but draws the foul on Damon Warren. So a couple, couple more free throws coming our way. And it's Warren's third foul of the game for the Javelina, so Warren needs to watch how he plays, maybe a little bit more conservatively here on the defensive side of the ball here. Yeah, and still plenty of time left in the game as uh, still 14 minutes. Rams with 14 fouls, Javelina's with only two. Hammond knocks down the first three throw, puts his team within 14. Hammond sinks both. Score now 47 to 34. Lead still with the Havelinas. Bassey has it now, taking it down the court. Being met by Hammond. And Reed Wallace gonna go for the three. Knocks it down. Reed Wallace is hot from behind the arc. And giving the Havelinas their biggest lead of the night now at 16 points. Havelinas yeah. looking pretty good right now on both defensive and offensive side of the ball here, Ferris. Yeah, Havelinas uh, crossing their T's and donning their eyes. And it looks like it's only going to lead to more good things. But a foul is going to be called on Bassey's uh, ambitious uh, attempt there to steal the ball. It's going to be Bassey's third. Havelina's 13th foul uh, in the half. Crowd wasn't happy with the call. Uh, sometimes uh, players get too excited, you know, when they think they can get the ball and uh, it'll lead to an easy foul. Yeah, Bassey just... Caught, they say caught a part of his ankle here for that foul. Rams keep the ball here. Still down by 16. See what they can do here. Hammond finds Walling. Walling can't even find the rim on that air ball. So Bailey going to bring the ball back down on the other side of the court. Goes ahead and gives it up to Bassey. He's going to let the Havelina point guard run the offense here. Reed Wallace open again from behind the arc. Can't get that shot to go, but Damon Warren's there to clean up the board for his team. Finds Adonis Bailey, and Bailey gets fouled there by Talkington. Yeah, Warren doing a good job there on the boards, though. Picking in both offensive and defensive boards here, keeping the possession alive for the Javelinas as Adonis Bailey will go to the line for two. So Damon Warren right now, Colton, that was actually his fifth offensive board. So doing a, guy, doing a good job here for the Havelins on both sides of the ball here. Getting blocks, getting steals, getting boards. Bailey can't put in that first free throw. Score still 50 to 34. There's a lot of Havelinas checking out and a lot of Havelinas checking in. So right now the lineup for the Havelinas is gonna be in the post. You got Adam McMa, uh, Marshall Bonds the third. Uh, in the forward position, uh, or in small, or in forward, excuse me, uh, Donis Bailey, who just sunk that free throw, putting his team up by 17. And in the guards, you got Gatrell Bracey and Dwight Taylor for the Havelinas. You know, it's still 12 minutes in the game. It's still a while from being over, but the Hav you can tell the Havelinas playing with a little bit more sense of, you know, enthusiasm here in this part of the game as they continue to build their lead here as another Angelo State miss. So Bracey with the ball now, it's gonna hold off a little bit, slow down the play as the Havelinas have a comfortable 17 point lead here. Bracey splits the defenders, almost found McMaw, but a little bit of a miscommunication. Havelinas do come away with the ball again. Bracey has it, now Bailey has it, and Bailey lays it in with ease, puts his team up by 19 points. Adonis Bailey so far, four of seven from the field. He's got nine points on the night. Yeah, the Hot Wings just seem to be being a little bit too much for the Rams to handle here. 
I think this game is getting a little out of reach here for the Angelo State Rams here. Down by 19, make that 17 as they get a two there. And so a timeout here being called, uh, the media timeout. 11.55 left in the game. Havelin is leading big, 53 to 36. We'll be right back. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the Hanson Court. 11.55 left in the game. Havelina's is leading. Uh, 53 to 36, so a huge 17 point lead for the Hogs. And uh, if they have uh, their say on it, Colton, they're definitely gonna wanna try to put more points, uh, and try to gain the momentum going into these next few games. Yeah, this is definitely kind of performance you want from your team in the last home game of the season. You know, Reed Wallace and Marshall Bonds being the seniors definitely wanna go out with a win. It looks like they're on their way to that right now. I mean, there's still 11 plus minutes left, but the is right now not looking like they're gonna lose any kind of momentum here. Okay, so they need a timeout now being called, excuse me. So 11.41 left in the game. Havelina's 53-36. We'll be right back. Alongside with Colton Williams for the Havelina Broadcast Network. Havelina is leading big with a 17 point lead. Score is 53 to 36. And Havelina is going to get a chance to increase that lead as the ball is going to be inbounded on their side of the court. Looks like Bracey is heading under the rim now to inbound it. So Dytrell Bracey. Finds Bailey. Bailey gonna take the three. That shot's gonna go off the rim. Rams gonna come away with the rebound. Antonio Dai now with the ball gives it off to Jovan Austin. Yeah, with the Hoblins having that seven point, 17 point lead right now, the Hoblins actually have a chance. Can't afford to give up, you know, a couple little threes right there. But you don't wanna be giving up too much bad shots there. Donis Bailey comes away with the ball there as the Rams couldn't make the best of their shot. Going ahead and giving back to that Charles Bracey. They got a lot of time that they can shave off the clock. Uh, Definitely can play with patience now as McMa couldn't do well with the hesitation jumper that he had there. Adonis Bailey once again getting burned on the steal attempt. Yeah, Bailey trying to gamble for steals a few times here as Dio open for the three-pointer. That shot goes in. Puts his team down by 14. 53-39 is the score here at the Hampton Inn court. So Bracey bringing the ball down the timeline. Finds Jamal Brown at the elbow. Jamal Brown finds the room. Gets the reverse layup to go for him. Makes the score 55 to 39. Still 10 32 left. Now Hammond gives it off to Austin. Austin for the three. That shot's not going to go. Reed Wallace going to get the board, but Reed Wallace careless with the pass. But Jovan Austin won't punish <laughs> him for it. As he try almost had an easy put back there, but missed it. You see how they getting a little lax on their defensive assignments there. So a foul being called on the Rams. It's going to be their seventh. So that's going to put the Havelinas in the bonus. Dytrell Bracey going to head to the line for a one and one.
Can't get the lucky bounce to go for him. So he's not going to get a shot at the second free throw. Ball with the Rams now. Antonio Dai going behind the arc again. That's his second consecutive three-pointer going down for him. So he puts his team within 13. Antonio Dai with somewhat of a hot hand for the Rams now. Bracey with the ball on the other end for the Hogs. Bassey drives in. High off the glass. Can't go for him. And Antonio Dai comes away with it. You see the Rams playing with a little bit more purpose here late in the game. The Rams playing with a little bit of urgency, as you said. Die with the ball. Being guarded by Jamal Brown. He's going to take the pull up three. And Antonio Die can't miss from behind the arc. That's his third consecutive three pointer. Puts his team just down by 10. That's going to cause Coach Pete to call time here. So 9.16 left in the game. Havelina's with a 10-point lead. Yeah, Coach Pete calling a timeout there because what was a 19-point lead all the way back down to a 10-point lead here for the Havelina. So nine points getting shaved off there. And I don't think Coach Pete's happy with that. Yeah, uh, Tony Odai just Tony Odai going three of three from behind the arc now. He's got nine points on the night. Surprisingly, he can't make his shots inside. As, uh, the only two shots he's missed so far have come from within uh, the three-point range. Uh, for the Javelinas, though, uh, two players in double figures so far, uh, Damon Warren with 10 and Reed Wallace with 11. So Javelinas going to talk it over real quick and try to lock down on Antonio Dai if they can, as he's made, once again, uh, three consecutive three-point shots. Yeah, the Javelinas need to try to build up their momentum here. As even with that 19-point lead, they started to get a little relaxed on their defensive assignment. And now they get a 19-point lead all the way back down to 10. So they need to get back to what they were doing earlier in this half to rebuild that lead. Brown gives it off to Rashad Bassett. Start off play again here. Bassey has it. Swings it around the perimeter. Wallace going to turn around, take the three-pointer. That shot's not going to go. The Havelinas are not going to come away with the board. Ball bounces out of bounds. And possession now belongs to the Angela State Rams. And that could have, I think that was kind of a little bit too early in the shot clock. We're taking the three-pointer like that. With, I mean, with momentum kind of sliding away from you, you want to try to get an easy two there to rebuild your lead. Yeah, the Rams have the ball now on their side of the court. Jalon Austin with it. Talkington from deep behind the arc. Can't get it. Damon Warren. Can't lock down the rebound. Dwight Taylor has it, throws it to Reed Wallace. Reed Wallace gets his second layup to go for him. Puts the team back up by 12. And that'll be Reed Wallace's 13th point of the game. Looks like Reed Wallace was debating if he was going to dunk that or not, but we haven't seen him dunk. He's not much of a dunker, so went for the easy layup instead. Just making sure the ball goes in. Exactly. So Austin has it now, tries to drive in. Can't get the shot to go, draws the foul, though. Foul's going to go on Rashad, uh, Rashad Bassey. That's his fourth foul in the game. He might have to be careful, and it looks like he might be subbed out as Donis Bailey gets up to check in, as does Dytrell Bracey. Yeah, Javon Austin for the Rams here struggling on the night. One for eight Puts in that night. free throw, though. Puts his team down by 11. Yeah, he's four for four from the free throw. I went to five for five after that one made right now. But struggling, not struggling from the free throw line, but struggling from the floor himself. One for eight. Has six points. Made that eight points. And yeah, knocks down the second free throw. Puts his team back within 10, so eight minutes left in the game. Havelinas trying to beat the full court press, and they do so with ease. Petrol Bracey finds Dwight Taylor. Having to swing the ball around. Damon Warren gets bumped. They're going to call the foul on Talkington. He's not happy with the call. And with that, we're going to go to a media timeout here. So seven. Hobbling is up 57 47. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way.
Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to the Kingsville Hampton in court. There's under eight minutes left to go in this game. Havelina is leading by 10. 57 of 47 is the score. Yeah, so the Havelina is slowly trying to rebuild back some of the momentum they had when they had that 19 point lead here. What they had about with about 11 minutes left in the game. Now with about eight minutes left, the Havelina see their lead only at 10 now. So Coach Pete trying to put his uh, personnel on the floor that's going to rebuild that lead here as Warren's going to go to the free throw line. Damon Warren doing the one and one. Gets the lucky bounce, so he's going to actually get one more look at it. So 58-47 now is the score. You see the Hawaii's outscoring Angelo State in the paint, 32 to 16. That's a main factor for the Hawaii is having this lead right now. Yeah, coming in big with points in the paint, able to uh, capitalize on their advantage there. Ball on the Rams' end of the court. You see the Hawaii is playing that perimeter defense right now, not letting any pass get into the interior of this Angelo State offense. Antonio Dye has it now going into the lane. Finds Chad Talkington from behind the arc. Not going to go, but Marsh going to pick up the board. Puts it back in for his team. 58-49 now is the score. Havelina is just up by nine points. Just about 7-12 left in the game. Yeah, good job by Marsh to keep the possession alive and get the point. So Damon Warren can't get that layup to go. They're going to go ahead and call a foul on him. He tried not to get the call. Looks like Warren's going to foul out on that one, too. Oh, it's, it's only his fourth. Only fourth. So he needs to watch out here. He only has one more foul to work with here. Yeah, a couple of Havelinas in foul trouble. Rashad Bassey also has four. That's why he's on the bench right now. So Adam McMob might looks to check in for Damon Warren on the next dead ball. But right now, the ball very alive. Damon Warren is actually going to run the fast break and go for the monster dunk. Damon Warren putting it down with extreme prejudice there. Puts his team back up by 11. And that's... If that, if that doesn't get the crowd into it, I don't know what will. You get a penalty caught on you, you get a defensive stop, and you get the ball, drive it down the court for the dunk. Emphatic dunk. So 6.36 left in the game. Damon Warren once again dropping it down. With Dropping authority, 60-49, like and you know, uh, on the previous play, Damon Warren picked up the foul, and all of a sudden stole the ball and actually ran for the fast break. You usually don't see big men doing it, but Damon Warren coming out with a very versatile game this time around. If Shaq can do it, Warren can do it. So the Havilene is taking the court again. Damon Warren, though, with four fouls, just one away from being fouled out, so he's going to go ahead and head to the bench. Havelina's going to go ahead and uh, switch out Warren for Adam McMah. That's, so with that, Damon Warren goes 6 of 10 from the field. He's going to have 13 points so far tonight for his team. With four fouls, it's not likely we'll see him back again. Only if he really needs to come in. Well, if the Havelinas can rebuild their lead so he doesn't have to come back into the rest of this game. Havelinas still with a comfortable 11 point lead as it is. Marsh has it now, being met with defense by Dwight Taylor. Havelinas uh, and Coach Pete as well, very confident in Dwight Taylor's defensive abilities uh, on the ball. Right now the ball with Dytrell Bracey for the Havelinas. Hands it off to Adonis Bailey. Bailey with the behind the back move, splits the defenders. Going to get called for the charge, though. 
<laughs> yeah, he kind of went there kind of recklessly into the paint, or into the lane on that one. Easy call there for the rest on that one. So that's going to be the 16 fouls on the Havelina. Still just one away from putting the Rams in the uh, bonus. Javon Austin running the ball down for his team. Finds Antonio Dai Dai going for the floater. Bouncing in and out. Can't get it to go. Second time's the charm for him. Gets his own board. Again, gets the ball to go. 62-51. Havelina's with a nine-point lead. Still plenty of time left. It's 5.30 on the clock. So the Havelina's going to want to try to maintain or expand their lead if possible. Yeah, they just got to be careful with the ball. Bonds goes from behind the arc. Can't do it. Adam McMah tries to fight for the board, but the Rams will come away with it. Yeah, so usually uncharacteristic the shot there from Archer Bonds. You really don't see him throwing up shots from behind the arc there, but... Felt confident in his abilities. Marsh finds Talkington from behind the arc, and Talkington knocks down that three-pointer. Now, the Havelinas with a six-point lead. So Havelinas really going to look to score, and you can uh, kind of feel the tension here. But Dytrell Bracey finds the room, finds Adam McMah. McMah is going to throw it back, but they're going to go ahead and call the foul on Talkington, I believe. That's going to be his third foul. Excuse me, it's going to be a foul on Regis Sutton. That's going to be his fourth foul, so Reggie Sutton here in foul trouble for the Rams. So Dytrell Bracey going to go for the one and one here, and uh, he's definitely going to try, he's definitely going to want to knock down both shots, get his team back up uh, by, by eight if he can successfully do so. Not good on the first attempt. Havelinas can't come away with the rebound either. So the Rams might be able to cut into this just a little bit more. So closing out the game so far, a little bit of a struggle for the Hogs. Austin gives it up to Talkington. Yeah, the Havelinas haven't done a good job in holding, carrying momentum here as they build momentum and then lose it within about two or three shots. Javon Austin with the three-pointer. He's struggled all night. That shot isn't going for him either. So Havelina's catch a break on the other end to see if they can score on, on the offensive end. And Coach Pete is going to call a timeout. Yeah, Coach Pete, I like him what he's seeing from his, from his team right now. As what we saw about 11 minutes left in the game, a 19-point lead brought all the way back down to only six now. So, you know, Ferris, what do you got to say with the Havelina's here? A 19-point lead. Struck all the way down to six. I mean, what are they going to do to close out this game? Well, you know, we've seen them struggle with that problem before. Uh, like you said, having big, big leads on some other teams this season and just not being able to close down the stretch. It's been a problem for them so far. I'm, I'm sure Coach Pete has taken note of it. And uh, he's going to try to coach his team out of it as he's usually successful in doing so, especially at home. So 60 to 54 here with 409 left. Yeah, let's see what Coach Peterson's game plan here is in the final four minutes of the game. The two most efficient scorers uh, for the Havelinas, Damon Warren right now sitting on the bench with four fouls, and Rashad Bassey also sitting on the bench with four fouls. He's usually Havelina's first offensive option. Yeah, only two Havelinas in double digits here. Both Reed Wallace and Warren, who's on the bench, both have 13 points. And it looks like Reed Wallace will come out to the court. So Rashad Bassey finds his way back onto the court. He is going to have to be careful, though, because one more will send him out of the game. It's Coach yeah. P talks to Dytrell Bracey on the sideline. Yeah, like you said, Bracey needs to be careful here because if this game comes down to the last couple of seconds, I mean, that's definitely one player you want on the floor for, for your team. So Bassey right now. Gives the ball off to Reed Wallace. Wallace with the fake on the three. Can't get it and can't get the jump shot to go either. So the Havelina's leading just by six here. Under four minutes left in the game. Jovan Austin with the ball now. Gives it up to Talkington. Havelina's going to have to lock down on defense. Talkington finds Austin. Ball being swung around by the Rams pretty well here. So good ball movement by them. 
as the crowd is cheering for the Javelinas to play some defense. Under 10 seconds left on the shot clock now. And Talkington going to go for another three-pointer. That one goes hard off the back of the rim. Good, uh, good box out there by Bailey. If he was able to get the rebound on that one. Yeah, Bailey picks up the board. And it looks like uh, Bailey and Bassey just on a miscommunication here. Not agreeing on the play. So 3-11 left in the game. Scores at 60-54. to We'll be right back. Full life, measured in seats, starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back to the Hampton in Court. I'm Ferris Valley, And I'm Colton Williams. And right now the uh, score is 60 to 54 lead with the Havilene. It's 3-11 left in the game. The Angelo State Rams not going away easy. They've trailed by as many as 19, but have come within six. Havelina is having some trouble on the offensive end. Looks like a uh, mis little miscommunication between Adonis Bailey and Rashad Bassey. But Bassey's to go to the free throw line here. Yeah, and with that 10th foul, that means Bassey's guaranteed two looks at the charity stripe. We'll see if he can knock them down. Havelina's definitely need them. They want to try to clinch this lead and make sure they don't give up any more ground. Bassey does, is successful in sinking the first one. Puts his team up by 7, 61, 54 is the score. Bassey can't knock down the second one. Die comes away with the rebound. So Austin has it now. Ramps still have a chance here with about three minutes left going down by seven. As Bassey only connect on one of two for free throws. So Marsh swings the ball around to Talkington. Austin has it here. Marsh goes for the three. Tough shot for him as his feet were not set. Dye tries to get the ball back up to the hoop, but the Havilene is deflected. So the Rams gonna inbound the ball. They have almost a fresh shot clock to work with, with 33 seconds on the clock. Marshall Bonds checks in for Reed Wallace here. Looks like they're gonna stick with Bonds' defensive ability to try to maybe use Reed Wallace's offensive ability here. Coach Peter definitely knows the strengths of his team. So Dai has it now. Ball loses the ball for a sec, but gets it back. Loses the ball again on <laughs> for a second. But Get Dwight it. Taylor not really punishing him on it. Marsh with a bounce pass, but he gets picked away by Rashad Bassey. So Bassey with a good read there. Yeah, how about you just kill some clock here and try to find an easy shot. 2-10 left in the game. Havelina's with a seven-point lead. Bailey has the ball at the top, looking for an option here, being guarded by Regis Sutton. Taylor has it now. Going to find Bonds. Bonds going to try to drive the ball in. Gives it off to McMahon. McMahon with the one-handed dunk. Puts it down with authority. McMahon making sure not only, he's not, not only that he scores, but he wanted to put the exclamation point on it. Puts his team back up by nine. Yeah, it's got to keep it up on the defensive side here. No easy shots. See if the Havilinas can do what you say, Colton. If they're going to get called for the blocking foul. So Bassey. That's going to foul out. On that's that going to be his fifth. So the Havilinas going to stick with Reed Wallace here to sub back in. Bassey heads off the court as well.
one looks like refs discussing something with the scores table. So Bassey's going to foul out of this game. So for about 90 seconds, the Javelinas are going to put their faith in Dytrell Bracey at the point position. Dytrell Bracey, though, uh, you know, a pretty good player. Coach Pete's very confident in his ball handling ability. So with that, Rashad Bassey ends the game only four of eight. Still gets 10 points on the night, three rebounds and four assists. So not a bad performance from him. Usually does better, but it looks like this time foul trouble is going to get the best of him. Yeah, Javon Austin here back at the free throw line for the Rams. One for nine on the floor, but perfect from the free throw line. Eight for eight. Yeah. Has ten points on the game. Austin knocks down those free throws. Puts his team back within seven. So Havelinas just really need to close it out. Reed Wallace has it now. Giving the ball to Dytrell Bracey. They're going to call the ball out of bounds on the leg of Bracey. So the Havelinas turn it over at a very inopportune time. Yeah, the Havelinas. We have seen some games here where the Havelinas had struggled to close out a game against Carlton. They had a double-digit lead in that one, too, and brought that one only within a win and by one. So, so the Havelinas really going to need to lock down on defense. Tocatin gives the ball up to Austin. Ball goes off of Dwight Taylor there. Can't keep the steal. So the Havelinas, or excuse me, the Rams gonna inbound with 28 seconds from the sideline. Let's see what the Havelinas can do here on defense. McMa locking down that rebound. Adonis Bailey gonna take it down with the finger roll. Puts his team back up by nine with just about a minute to go. So it looks like the Havelinas might be closing out successfully. Sudden gets that shot in off the glass. Yeah, the, if the Havelinas want to exchange basket now with the Rams, they'll be happy to take that as they have that nine point, or the eight, seven point lead, sorry. Yeah, after Sudden put in that one, the lead got cut back down to seven for the Havelinas. Just a minute left in the game. It looks like head coach Fred Reich is talking to the referee here on the sideline. Can't really decide on something. And it looks like the Campton in court is ready to, ready to see play resume, but the refs are going to keep the discussion going with Fred Reich. Dytrell Bracey finds Dwight Taylor. They're just going to try to choke the clock again. Dytrell Bracey going all the way. And Javon Austin steals it. So the Havelinas lose it. Antonio Dye goes for the three. Puts the team within four points. So 47 seconds left in the game. We'll be right back. Man. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. No, you're not really that Welcome back to the Hampton in Court. I'm Ferris Bauer, joined alongside with Colton Williams. Havelinas with a slim four-point lead. Antonio Dye sinking that last three-pointer, making the game close. So Havelinas really going to need to lock down the ball on the offensive end, try not to give away any more turnovers. Yeah, we're still 47 seconds left in the game here. I mean, there's still a lot of time, only down by four for the Rams. Yeah, so just like you said, the Havelinas got to play conservative here and just not turn the ball over. Just a two-possession game here. And so Reed Wallace has it now. Gives it off to Dwight Taylor. And Bailey going to be fouled, so he's going to head to the line for two from the charity stripe. So 37.3 seconds left in the game. Donna's Bailey. 
don't think has gone to the charity stripe all night. So these free throws are going to be very important. See what Bailey can do here. Misses the first one. This one coming flat off the iron. So a lot of pressure on Bailey's second free throw. Bailey gets the lucky bounce and gets it to go. Puts his team back up by five. 37 seconds. One thing's for sure, Colton, the Havilene is definitely going to need to play defense here. Yeah. Doesn't need to do here. No. And then good steal there by Bailey. So that might be the dagger in the game for the Rams. Yeah, it looks like Bailey clinched that game with that steal. So <laughs> he's going to head to the line for two more. That will be the 17th turnover for the Rams in this game. So Havelinas have a lot. So Bailey gonna take two from the charity stripe. Gets the first one to go, puts his team up by six. 29.1 seconds left on the clock, so the game looks like it's all is uh, going to go to the Havilinas. Just got to wait for the clock to run out. And shot clock has been turned off. So Bailey puts in both that time. Puts his team back up by seven. It looks like the Havilinas may have clinched the victory. Being able to close out the game well. Yeah. You're and Dwight Taylor now stealing it away. And he's going to go up for his own dunk. So the Havilinas looking to... Put the nail in the coffin against the Rams here. It's under 20 seconds left. They lead by nine. Devon Austin with a off bounce shot. Can't get it to go. Wallace rebound. And Dytrell Bracey picks the ball up and he's going to run out the clock. And the Havilinas take this game against the Angelo State Rams with a 70 to 61 win. So a good win there by the Havilinas, helping their chances with better seating in the LSC. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come back with the post game. Get your f I am. You're not f in here. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. We're going to go through some quick stats before we get to an interview with Coach Pete. So the Havilinas locked down this game with a 70-61 victory, which was very much needed because they were in a three-way tie in the LSC so far as uh, before this game. Uh, Kingsville came in to 7 and 9 tied with West Texas A&M and A&M Commerce. So the Havilinas definitely want to try to get the best seating possible as they head into Allen for the LSC uh, playoff tournament. The Havilinas took this one 70 to 61 going 50% from the field, 28 of 56 attempts. Havilinas only going 3 of 13 though from behind the arc. A uh, couple of players in double figures for the Hogs, Damon Warren going 6 of 10 from the field with 13 points. Reed Wallace goes 5 of 10, 3 of 6 from behind the arc. He's got 13 points as well. And Rashad Bassey, who fouled out there at the end of the game, ended his night with 10 points, 4, four assists, and 3 rebounds. So uh, good play by him. Havilene has had a 19-point lead, and it looked like they were going to comfortably cruise into their victory, but it didn't go their way. Uh, Antonio Dye knocked down four three-pointers, going to perfect 4-4 four four from behind the arc uh, tonight. For the Rams, he got 14 points. 
Ryan Marsh went 7 of 8 from the field. He had 14 points as well. Javon Austin had struggled from the field 1 of 10, but sunk all his 8 free throws, so he has 10 points as well on the night. So the Javelinas, uh, it got close it, uh, with Antonio Dye's uh, last three-pointer. Actually put uh, the Rams within four points with 47 seconds left. The Javelinas were able to lock down on the game, take home the victory, and uh, hopefully improve their standings in the LSC. But it doesn't work out so well for them so far. But stick around and... We're going to be right back with an interview from Coach Pete Peterson. And it's just going to come right after this. I'm Ferris Abari, joined alongside with Reed Wallace. Reed Wallace, uh, of course, this was senior night for you, so just describe uh, how big of a night it was. Well, well it was pretty, <laughs> pretty big night for the seniors, and you know, if Reed would hit a couple more shots, it would have been great, but, you know, whatever. At least he played a little bit of defense. You know, uh, it is fair to mention, though, that, you know, you actually led the way for the Javelinas with 13 points uh, with uh, your last home game. Well, I figure that if he wants to thank anyone, probably his head coach who set up all the sets for him to hit those shots. <laughs> And uh, what happened there? You guys had the 19-point lead, but it kind of got away from you. And uh, what was the big problem there? Coach, you got something to say? <laughs> oh, all right. He's got it. All right. So he gives me the hard one. Uh, I, you know, I think we might have gotten a little happy with the lead. We got too content with uh, that. And we just kind of let up a little bit. But I guess it took uh, them to get on a little run to uh, get us fired up and actually get down and start playing some defense. So just one more game here left on the road against Abilene Christian. That game's very important because uh, seating depends on it. So uh, what are you guys going to look to do uh, as you head into Abilene? Uh, you know, they got some. They got a nice front court, so we got to keep them off the glass. You know, last time we played them, I think they beat us on the offensive glass. So that's crucial, you know, limit them to uh, one, uh, one shots. And we just got to play good defense throughout the entire game instead of like this game when we let up there for a little bit. So it's uh, great defense and uh, trying to dominate the boards, will, I think, will help us do it. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. No All right, and now joining me, it's going to be. Joining me is now head coach Pete Peterson. Coach, uh, way to uh, handle hey, the. How you doing, man? Doing good. Way to doing handle good. the PR business for Reed Wallace. Okay? Yeah, really, you know. Let him answer why we uh, let him back in the game. <laughs> let him handle that one. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know, coming into this game, you knew it was really important. You guys uh, were in a three-way tie with Commerce and uh, West Texas A&M. So uh, how big was this game for you guys? Well, we kind of I know people keep talking about seeding and things like that. We really can't control any of that. We just have to, you know, we just need to get a win for ourselves, for the seniors. This Tim beat us last time. There's a lot of good reasons. Last home game, there's a lot of reasons to uh, get it taken care of. So uh, that, that's the main thing, just to keep trying to get better. Each, each of us at this point in time of the season is just trying to get better. And um, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought it was good, great effort by us tonight. Good to got that lead. And it would be nice to just close it out, play everybody. We just didn't get it done. But anyway, we'll take it. Yeah, and uh, something else I had noticed is uh, you made sure every player on your squad this time got a little bit of playing time on the floor. Uh, what was your mindset behind that? Uh, just how they've been doing. Mike's been playing well in practice. Ryan actually been stepping up a little bit. So I thought I'd give him a shot. And both guys, I thought I did okay. Maybe, you know, they'll look at Maybe they need to get back in. But I think if you give a guy just a little bit, um, and they're a little bit more part, part of it, and so uh, I hope it helps in that stretch because we don't know, you know, you got injuries, got foul trouble, we don't know. So just to get them, a, get them a taste, they haven't been in there in a while. So, so one more game before the primetime playoffs in Allen. So what's going to be your mindset going into Abilene Christian? Well, it'll be senior night for them. They'll have the same thing. We beat them here, so they'll have the same mindset that we had tonight against Angela. And um, you know, they've lost. If you look at the record, Ferris, they've just lost. You know, they've lost so many close games, overtime games. 
You know, they could be sitting in our spot, or they could even be higher. And um, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us. And uh, looking forward to it because that'll help us. It'll be on the road six hours, same thing as Allen. Get on the road. We're going to use it as preparation for the for the tournament. And um, unfortunately, we got to come back and we got to head all the way back to Allen. That's a, that's a long trip. But that's the main thing. Just try to get ready for it. But we need we need to go play that thing. We're going to have to win. I'm not. I'm not uh, going to spell my guys just to get them ready for Tuesday. We're going to go try to win that thing. All right. And uh, as always, uh, you have the time. I don't know. You guys are still shoveling snow in Denver. So have fun with that, Tim. All right. All right. And that'll end it here. And that was our last home game of the season. So thank you guys for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time uh, this Saturday when we cover softball. Thank you.